give us an idea, first of all, how big a shock the news about Zach has been, and as far as you know, how is he? Yeah, uh, really unexpected. Now, we've been talking for the last four or five weeks at boys about controlling things that you can control, and some things just pop up completely unexpected. And of course, our first thoughts are with Zach and his health, making sure that he's all right. And as always, the club's responded really well. Um, he's got everything he needs. In terms of medical advice and, and support, and uh, we'll continue to do so. I think, you know, I've been around the boys and said, look, get him a text message, give him a call when you can, just let him know that we're all thinking about him and that we can't wait to see him back. There's a lot of seasons still to be played and he'll uh, make some big contributions, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I just think it just underpins the fact that, you know, he's, he's, for whatever reason, you know, he's not, not quite well. Um, uh, I'm not a clinical psychologist, physical or mental, but um, no, we need to look after Zach and make sure that he's good and uh, he's got an opportunity to be a better version of himself. I appreciate it's a very difficult question to answer, but have you got any idea how long he might be unavailable for? Um, oh, listen, it'll only be an anecdotal of story club we play like myself. And, you know, I hope that uh, the test come back. And I think from what we're hearing, um, Early on, they're pretty good. Everything seems all right. So maybe it'll be right for the next game. I know we've got a couple of weeks now because of the Challenge Cup gap. But ultimately, we have to have a conversation with doctors and make sure that everything is absolutely fine for him to go and play rugby. Where does it leave you in terms of a fullback for Friday? Yeah, we're playing goalie with Ned, deep centre, I think, like that, something like that. Um, no, it's been difficult. Look, we didn't know Zach was coming really until um, Tuesday. We weren't certain. So we've been preparing anyway um, without him on the assumption that he wasn't going to come. And Jack Broadbent's been preparing there, been preparing there really well. He's been excellent. And do you know what? I put it on Jack a little bit this last couple of weeks and I've been asked a lot of questions about him and I thought he was exceptional against Toulouse. And when we looked at some of his numbers, statistically, he was out of this world. I don't know, and if there's any response that a young fella needs to produce on the back of not playing and being disappointed that was it that was the ideal so no, no worries at all you know he'll do a fantastic job and again that's all the things that you can control being prepared and having this uh, subconscious intuition uh, about the way that we play a game muscle memory and uh, we've got a lot of good young boys who are chomping a bit working hard as they have done for the last month and ready to expend some energy tomorrow night have you recalled Levi Edwards? Yes, um, Levi's at arm's length. You know, he's been out on York, he's done a little bit and uh, he's, he's one of those players that we want to have around because he's not a million miles off. And I went, um, young Morgan Gannon come through, they were very much on level peggings and, and Morgan's uh, career is really taken off. He's going to be a superstar. I always think at next age of Morley. We want, we want to get Levi there as well. Um, but whether he'll play this week or not, I'm not know. Uh, but he uh, he'll be in and around the squad, and, and uh, hopefully we'll be a game on the field in around or sure in the not too distant future. So, given the numbers available and given Zach's uh, issue, how difficult a team has it been to select this week for you? Oh, mate, we're, we're, we're delving into kids, uh, seventeen-year-olds. You know, that, that's where we're at. Um, you know, when you look at some of the people that. Uh, are injured, Tommy Briscoe, Liam Sutcliffe, Fossey Tua, Newman, Caesar, Myler, Allroyd, Walker, Johnson, Ad, uh, obviously Zach um, with his seizure, and then a couple of suspended in, in Zane and, and James Bentley. You know, they're the real disappointments when you've got players suspended because we can control that to a degree. Uh, but just as it is, that's the, the way sport is. But what I will say is that it's actually quite promising. I think when I look at you know, the fact we've won one, lost one by two and, and drawn one in the last couple of weeks, we have such a deficit. I don't know if one or two of those players are in and around that at uh, uh, those times. You think about what second half of the season looks like when they come back, you, know, you get a, a fresh new coach in there and uh, everybody's got this rejuvenation and an opportunity to relaunch almost. And that's really exciting. And I think, you know, the club's got a real sense of togetherness when I mean, it both on and off the pitch. Uh, and we're all walking around with smiles on our face. You won't quite be able to hear the music through the walls there, but it's a good place to be at the minute. Um, so, yeah, it, listen, it's been disappointed, uh, disappointing in some of the players that we've not had to feel, but actually it forces your hand in giving some young um, blocks an opportunity and reward them for some hard work they've, they've invested in the last three or four weeks. Have you got a prognosis on Liam and, and Tom in terms of how long they might be out for? Yeah, Tom's gotten up tomorrow. 
so it'll be a while. I don't know how long that'll be. Um, again, welfare's first and foremost. Uh, and Sutty's had uh, a knee problem for a little while. I think it will be a case of just getting it right, letting it settle down. And and again, one of the problems with having a lot of injuries is it increases the volume of work that players like Liam have got to do. Because he's got to get up to any field, he's got to play in half, he's got to play a bit of centre, he's got to get full back. And you know, there's a lot of volume in there, and it's hard to control, he's got to go the extra mile. He won't have to do that, God willing, in the next couple of weeks, because we'll get some numbers back. So I don't expect him to be quite as long as Tommy. And Tom's was, I think you said last week, an ankle. So is it is an operation on his ankle? Yeah, yeah, it's an ankle injury. I'm uh, again, I'm not a physiologist, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a lower foot. Um, it, it, it won't quite sure what that was. The doctors have sorted him, and he's, he's been well looked after. But yeah, it's, it's an ankle injury. Could that be the season for him? Do you think? No, I don't. I don't think it. Be, I don't think it's quite that extensive. Um, I think it's more one of those sort of breakage type things. Um, maybe six, seven, eight weeks. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if he was longer than eight weeks. Just a couple of final points from me. Obviously, we now know Rowan won't be here till next week. What sort of impact, uh, not impact, what sort of, well, maybe impact, but what sort of input has he had ahead of Friday? Yeah, lots. I've been in lots of uh, conversations with him, dialogue. He's been watching a lot of video. We've been sending him a lot of information. Everything we can, really. Um, and ultimately, you know, he'll, he'll form his own subjective opinions on, on players and, and the setup. And I'm really looking forward to learning from him. You know, he's been... Um, a career a, a career coach, being a coach for a lot of years and he's had a lot of experience and comes from a great pedigree, as, as we said. And already some of the messages, the conversations we're having are of great interest. You know, they're really encouraging and uh, it's going to be exciting when he gets here, I think, early next week. Um, I'm looking forward to catching up and, uh, and just spending a lot of time, really, helping him understand. I think that's the first thing you've got to do is understand where we're at, what's going on, and then we can start moving forward together. And just lastly from me, Jonesy, given the selection issues, etc., how big a challenge do you face against Hull KR? Oh, it's a big one. They're on a winning streak, aren't they? And uh, they're getting excited about the uh, semi-final. And I know I've been coached by Tony Smith, some of his philosophy around that. You know, I don't think he's one of these coaches that likes to uh, slow down in the week before a, a semi. He'll want to go in it full tilt and, and keep the momentum that they've had with their league form. I don't think they'll rest players, or many if any. So we'll be challenged, I reckon, tomorrow with uh, the best of OKR. And they've been very good this year. You know, they, uh, they're really competent. They've been exciting for a couple of years now. But I think they bring in sort of uh, almost a conservative nature to that chaos that they're able to produce as well. They're a real sort of hybrid team, which makes them exceptionally dangerous. Uh, so, yeah, we, we're, we're excited about that challenge that it poses for us. But at the same time as well, we've been working hard and we're ready to take that next step now and, and, and start moving forward ourselves. Just just on just on, on Saturday, it obviously happened on Tuesday afternoon, but Tuesday morning he was at, he was at training, wasn't it? Was there ever any, any sort of hint at all that he's even slightly off what he is normally? No, it was great. It was brilliant. He, um, he trained really well. And this is the thing with that, you know, whatever press and perception you've got of him. Actually, I reckon 95% of what Zach is is a really spirited character. He's bouncing around the place. You know, some of his old friends are really excited to see him back. There's plenty of banter and jokes in right areas. And um, I don't know, he's fantastic in the meetings. Now, we always play a few games or uh, we, we break the ice in all our meetings and uh, we get excited and he was brilliant. And then he went and trained really well. Uh, and then in the afternoon, he's gone home and this has happened and it's just one of those really bizarre things. But again, he's been well looked after and, and uh, we hope we'll be back with him soon. Did he do a full training session on Tuesday or was it just sort of an easy his way back into it sort of thing? Um, no, I think he did a bit of medical stuff. Uh, uh, but there, it was, it was pretty full. He was involved in the vast majority of what we did, the programme. Um, obviously, our, our S&C staff for Mitchell Mix is outstanding in terms of load. You know, they're always really careful in what players do uh, and the way that they're loaded into sessions. And that, that's regardless of whether you, you, you're new in or you've been here a while. Um, but for the most part, he did everything that we wanted him to do and expected him to be able to do. Oh, Has there been any suggestion that it's linked to stress or anything that's happened in, in the past week, leaving Wigan and what have you? Could be. I've no idea. No idea. That, that's an investigation, isn't it? And uh, that's what the medical people will be doing. So, um, obviously, I, I've not seen him 
since since uh, he left training on Tuesday. Uh, in constant dialogue with our coaching staff, medical team, as to how he is. But ultimately, a minute, mate, he needs to rest up and just get um, get himself right. But um, I've no idea. I've no idea the cause uh, of, yeah. of why he's had his season. Yeah, uh, and how's he reacted to it um, from your conversations? Is he is his state of mind all right with it? Yeah, yeah, po- yeah. Positive as always. Um, again, you know, tough character and always looking on the bright side of life. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, in many ways, we're excited about getting him back. You know, our team's gone through a little bit in the last little while um, to get somebody with some legacy and history with us and somebody who puts a smile on people's faces. But that always starts with him, always a positive kid. So uh, look, we're looking forward to getting him back, but we've got to make sure it comes back in right context. If Jack Broadbent can play fullback, what are you going to do in the centres? Can you tell us that? We're going to put some uh, hybrid players in there, mate. We're going to uh, mix it up. Some lads that have played a bit of centre before, uh, potentially we finish with some back rows in there. Um, but I'm really comfortable, happy. In fact, again, I think it might force a hand that will give us a bit of an insight into some other options uh, that we've got. So, um, yeah, a couple of young blokes and uh, uh, some older fellas putting their hand up to play at centre of sort of hybrid back row centre type players. Have you ever come across a situation, or can you remember a situation like this during Leeds when you've been literally? I think every player is either injured, suspended, or in the in the initial squad. I don't think it were a million miles off a couple of years ago, was it? During COVID, we went through a horrendous time. Um, I don't believe in um, luck or bad luck. You know, there's there's probably some underlying things that we can learn from both periods. But now's not that time. We've just got to deal with what we've got. We've got a few, a fair few injuries there. Um, don't make the circumstance any easier for me and it hasn't done for the last three or four weeks. Um, but what I will say under the tip of that proverbial iceberg is there's a lot of hard work going on and uh, a lot of, I believe, a lot of development, a lot of improvement, lads are communicating, they're walking around with a smile on their face. And it's almost now, Pete, where you, you take a step back and rather than giving it the big Churchillian and the big Beowulf war cry. They're leading themselves. You know, some real leaders have emerged from this period. Um, whilst some of these others have been injured and unable to play. And also, it's been a great opportunity for some young blokes to get some experience and forces to have a look at them. Uh, so, for that reason, you know, whilst it's been difficult when you look at the top end of the iceberg in terms of results, and it's, it's a results-based industry, What's gone on at the club has been really encouraging and I, I'm really excited about what the fruits of that will look like when they're produced in the next sort of three, four months. And as you've mentioned, you've got two weeks until the next game. Could we see some some players coming back, the likes of Caesar, Myler, Fussy Two, people like that, for um for the Salford match? Well, Tetavan on Bentley definitely be back what the off suspension. Um I I don't know about Zach. Again, it, just from a layman's point of view, not a medical point of view, could possibly in there. Um, and Fussy Tua, I'd be surprised if he wasn't around. Sutcliffe could be back. Uh, I reckon Myler's chomping at the bit. Myler won a million miles off this week, actually, and he's sort of uh, in a brave type of way, given the context of what's happened, has actually sort of put his hand up. But he said, no, no, no. When, when people come back, we want them to come back 110%. So all they have to focus on is their job within the team. And I, and I reckon Aidan Caesar, hopefully, is growing all settled down. And uh, the weeks that he's had off will, will enable him to play as well. But, mate, what that looks like will ultimately be up to Rowan. Over the last month and, and a bit that, that you've been uh, interim boss, do you still have the, the ambitions one day to be a head coach in a couple of years' time or wherever? Still still have an ambition. I never had an ambition to be an head coach. Um, I found myself here for the circumstance. So it's interesting. I've never applied for a job in my life. Uh, I haven't met. I've been a professional player for the vast majority of it. But all the little hats that you might see and find me in have come just through trying to do the right thing and working as hard as I can um, and enjoying people. I love people. So I, I'd never had any ambition of uh, to be an head coach. That being said, I've never had an experience in my life where I've felt yeah. this much purpose. 
Um, I've said it before, it's been I mean, most unlikely in period of life. I've won more I mean, in the last uh, three or four weeks than I've won in the uh, last three or four years, which has uh, been unbelievable. And as it no, I know that, mate. gives me a new focus yeah. on what I want to do in life, I, absolutely. I think it's done two things. One, it's helped me understand what I want to do uh, and probably more important, what I don't want to do. Um, would I have an appetite to be an head coach one day down the line? Absolutely. And I think um, that's why when Ryan comes in, I'm going to make the most of every minute to learn what I can from him, what I can from Sean Long continuing, uh, Rich Onyx and everybody else. Uh, and, and just be a steward of this great club that I've been a part of for a vast majority of my life, you know, and keep trying to bring the young players through, tell the stories and, and repay the gratitude that I've, uh, and grace that I've, I've had through the course of my career. Uh, can you just sum up how this last month has been for yourself then? Um, yeah, on one hand, the most anxiety producing, but there's, there's a few fair different types of anxiety. Um, I, hear, I hear the word, the phrase imposter syndrome batted about quite a lot. Never, ever felt that for a second. Um, every night when I go to bed, I'm thinking about it. When I wake up first thing in the morning, thinking about it. When I go for a run, I jump on a bike, I'm thinking about it. Constantly on for the players. And, I, and I've loved it. You know, some of that um, imagination has come flooding back. And uh, it's made me feel alive. You know, it's, it's been difficult. With all the hats on, not least because I'd love to have had some results as well, you know. Um, but we've had a few little ones. Um, but more importantly, I mentioned that iceberg. I understand, you know, having been here a lot of years and seeing the trends, what brings about good teams, good cultures, that there's a lot of work to do. But we've started, we started that ball rolling it last month, and it's been a real honour and a pleasure to be part of that. And one thing nobody can take away from me, which is most important, but is the relationships that I've galvanised. Um, and forged in this last uh, in this last little while with some of the players. You know, I've had some really nice conversations, some nice texts. I feel closer to all of them, and that hopefully will help me in this uh, next little chapter.